Father, you are indeed a great God. We are indebted to you. It is right and it is good for us to give you praise. There is much glory to be given to you. And so much of that has to do with your son that you gave to us to reconcile us to yourself. I pray for us in this time. I pray that you would help us, you would assist us, that we would be able to remember him and observe him well as he should be. Lord, give us your spirit, give us your wisdom, give us your grace to do that. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. As we come to our time around the Lord's table today, we are going to be looking at a passage in which Jesus reveals himself as the Savior who seeks and saves the lost. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Luke chapter 19? We're going to be looking at verses 5 through 10 together. And if you don't have a Bible, there are some men that are coming down the aisle. Simply raise your hand and they will get one to you. If you don't actually own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can read God's word for yourselves. The story starts in verse 1. and Jesus is on his way from Galilee to Jerusalem and he is in the city of Jericho. He's passing through Jericho and this is where he encounters Zacchaeus, rich Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was rich because he was a tax collector. He collected tax from the Jewish people for the Roman government, and he relayed that money to Rome. He had authorization to collect a minimum tax, and he certainly did that and forwarded that money as it should be. But he also had authorization to tax beyond that. And the system was loose, and it was such that a man who was a tax collector such as Zacchaeus could collect more than he reported. And so this was an opportunity for him to become very, very rich. And for the Jew who was taxed by the tax collector, they simply had no recourse. They just had to pay. And so the Jews despised the tax collectors. But they had a particular disdain for those tax collectors who were chief tax collectors. And that's what Zacchaeus was. The position of chief tax collector was something that was sold by the Roman government. And there was a bidding process that went on to acquire the privilege of being a chief tax collector. So Zacchaeus purchased with his own money the right and the privilege to take unjustly from his own countrymen and give that money to the Roman government and to keep it for himself. And because of that, he was exceedingly repulsive in the eyes of most Jews. As we read our passage, we want to look at two things here. We want to see actually what Jesus does to seek and save the lost and why he does that. We can see his pursuit of Zacchaeus and we can see why he does that. So let's read verses beginning in verse 5 together. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry down and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And we'll drop down to verse 9. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. We see Jesus' pursuit of Zacchaeus in verse 5. It's a very earnest, it's a very specific pursuit. He says, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Jesus is seeking out Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus would never seek him out. Zacchaeus was interested in who Jesus was, but he never at a heart level had a desire to submit to Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And we see the reason why Jesus sought him out at the end of the passage in verse 10. The Son of Man, that's Jesus himself, has come to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus is telling something very specific to Zacchaeus here. He's saying, I am the Son of Man. And one day I will come to this earth as a conquering king. But I've come to this world to take on flesh. And the reason why I've done that is to seek and to save. And when I seek you, I'm going to search you out for a specific purpose. That's so that I can save you and I can release you from the penalty of your sin. And the ones that I save are the ones who are lost. They're not the winsome, attractive people who have it all together. I save the ones who in their natural born condition, which is everybody, 
is destined for God's judgment and destruction because of their sin. It doesn't matter to Jesus that Zacchaeus was offensive in the eyes of his own people. It doesn't bother him whatsoever. What compels Jesus is that he is a savior who seeks to save. And we see the result of that in verse 9. It's right there. Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. Salvation. Zacchaeus is rescued from the penalty of all of his greed and all of his dishonesty. He's saved from that. And the proof of that, you can see it in verse 8. Zacchaeus' repentance has brought him very, very low. He voluntarily assigns to himself the same penalty that was due in Old Testament Israel to one who would steal animals from another. He's going to repay multiple times back what he stole. So Zacchaeus has a brokenness over his sin. That brokenness gives evidence to the fact that Jesus actually did seek him and save him. This passage shows us is that Jesus is one who seeks and saves those who are lost. If you're here today and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if he is your Savior and Lord, we're delighted you're here. We want to invite you to join us as we take the elements. When the elements come to you, just remember the condition that you were in when Jesus sought you out. Maybe you weren't a tax collector like Zacchaeus was, but whatever your condition was, you were lost, and Jesus sought you out, and he saved you. What he did was he went to a cross in your place, and he bore in his own body God's judgment against you because of the offense that your sin was to him. So when the elements come to you, just take and hold and remember what Christ did to save you and rescue you from the penalty of your own sin. And then when you've prepared your heart, please take the elements on your own. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want you to understand that we're delighted that you're here. We're very, very thankful that you can worship with us, you can gather together with us, you can hear the teaching from God's Word. I want you to understand that this is a time for people who are followers of Jesus, people who've trusted Jesus as their Savior and Lord and follow him as their master. They have affections for him and they love him. This is a time for them. When the elements come to you, simply pass them by to the person next to you. But we want you to know that salvation is available to you just like it is to everybody else. It's available to the person who will cry out to Christ and ask them to be his Savior and their Lord and submit to him as their Master and their Lord. I would love to talk to you about that afterwards. I'll be available. Any of the other avail elders will be available as well. Or just simply talk to the person in the row next to you. Any one of us would love to tell you what it's like to live under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So men, come and serve us, and then I'll return Close our time in prayer.